Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Within these last hours, the Secretary of State, John Kerry, to television audience around the world, declaring the attack with chemical weapons on a civilian population in East Damascus several days past is a, quote, moral obscenity. The Secretary of State went on to lay out the case, including that the United States must and will respond to this moral obscenity. The Secretary of State says there is little doubt that the attack was launched by the Assad regime during this last civil these last two years of civil war the Assad regime is hard pressed by a variety a witch's brew of groups opposing it all under the umbrella of free syrian army but that's hardly articulate we know much more about the resistance in eastern syria in western syria northern syria southern syria along the golan this particular attack it doesn't have one name to it. The neighborhood that was attacked is eastern Damascus, understood to be inside the Alawite-controlled war zone of uh, Syria. However, the re reports are indistinct as to who attacked and when and how. We have the video images of the dead and the wounded. We have casualty rates, but we don't have a lot of detail, which is why we were looking for the United Nations today to send in an inspection team into the area of the neighborhood that was attacked. We are, were told they were attacked by rockets. That was the vector for just, for the sarin gas that w that killed all these people and wounded all these people. However, we were told later on during the morning that the UN inspection team had been turned back by sniper fire. This is a buffer zone between the Free Syrian Army and the Alawite Syrian regime forces. The UN will try again, but in any event, the Secretary of State coming to the conclusion this is a moral obscenity and that there's little doubt that the Assad regime launched this chemical weapons attack. I'm joined now by Bill Raggio of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. We will momentarily turn to the attack of the Taliban, another moral obscenity in Afghanistan that deserves a great deal of attention because it's launching attacks against the Afghan army, the one we're training to take our place when ISAF pulls out of combat operations in Afghanistan, where we've been at war for more than 12 years now. Bill, a very good evening to you. Momentarily, I want to remind everyone of an attack that you and I reported on last June. I'm looking at Al Jazeera. Iraq claims foiling Al-Qaeda nerve gas plot. What do we know about the bust of this cell in Iraq last June? Good evening, Bill. Good evening, John. Yes, this cell was making sarin gas. Uh, the Iraqi government said that it conducted the raid to break up this cell. Uh, it was plotting to get up in tax either in Syria or Turkey, um, and possibly in the West as well. Um, the government broke up the cell with the help of the CIA and other foreign intelligence agencies. And, uh, you know, this is, you know, not, not surprising. We know that al-Qaeda in Iraq, which the predecessor to the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, which is the current incarnation of al-Qaeda in, in the region. Uh, we know that they've conducted chemical attacks inside Iraq during the, uh, the, the, the insurgency in 2007, 2008, numerous gas attacks. I'm sorry, this 2006 and 2007. They attempted to, to detonate uh, crude chlorine devices, and it killed and, and uh, injured a lot of Iraqis. So we know they have the intent, they have the capability. They said that the, uh, there was formulas that were gathered and the you know so we we can't doubt that the al-qaeda and its affiliates are, are seeking continuing seeking to conduct chemical attacks and biological attacks against the west and against its enemies in the middle east the group of five men i followed the al jazeera report from june 2nd you can all scan it the group of five men built two facilities in baghdad to produce sarin and mustard gas using instructions from another al-qaeda group this is according to a spokesman of the iraqi government the islamic state of iraq an al-qaeda backed group is still active in the country for this is from last june and launches regular attacks on government and civilian targets the group is largely referred 
refrain from waging violence outside Iraq, but earlier in 2013, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, this is the Islamic State of Iraq, Al-Qaeda in Iraq and, and Levant is headed up by a man named al-Baghdadi, who has now moved into the Syrian combat theater. Earlier this year, Al-Qaeda in the, the Islamic State of Iraq said it was linked to Syria's Jabhat al-Nusra, which is the al-Nusra front in Syria. So, Bill, let me uh, uh, see if I can control all this. We have the Baghdad government boasting in June that they'd busted up a cell that was operating in two facilities to produce sarin and mustard gas. And in June, that group was linked to al-Nusra. Is that all correct, Bill? That's correct, yes. Yeah. So the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant and the al-Nusra front really were the same entity right. until a leadership uh, issue arose this, this April when Baghdadi tried to assume the group. It's complicated, but they're both al-Qaeda affiliates and... Um, yeah, so that, that's, it's absolutely connected. Bill and I are laying this down because of that word undeniable used by the Secretary of State. You understand, in a war you need good intelligence and better intelligence and the best intelligence. Right now, this information points to the fact, and there's a photograph of the sarin and mustard gas lab that was busted in Baghdad, two facilities. There's information that links al-Nusra fighting in Syria. And... Uh, Islamic State of Iraq fighting with al-Baghdadi in Syria, jihadist groups link them to manufacturing sarin and mustard gas. We're told that the attack in eastern Damascus that the Secretary of State was commenting upon was sarin gas delivered by rockets. Rockets that didn't look to be homemade, but certainly didn't look to be mass-produced. There's a lot of evidence. It doesn't all come to one conclusion. So, Bill, let's move back away from the fog of war in Syria and go back to the fog of war in Afghanistan. You report on a Taliban suicide assault attack against the Afghan army in Kapisa. Where is that, Bill? Kapisa province is just north of the province of Kabul, where the obviously the capital of Afghanistan. It's a gateway to the capital. Um, it's an area that's been contested for quite some time. The French forces were, uh, were based there until they withdrew last year. Two years ahead of schedule, by the way. Lots of suicide attacks and other types of attacks that the insider attacks as well. The attacks where the Taliban try to infiltrate and, and kill uh, NATO soldiers. Um, and that pretty much uh, got the French to, to quit Afghanistan. So this area of the province is controlled by the Afghan army or the Taliban? Do we know? Uh, well, the, the governor of Kapisa province said just on August 23rd that the large areas of two districts, there's two districts in the province, large areas of both districts are under Taliban control, not just the Taliban, but uh, the Hizbi Islamic Gulbuddin, which is uh, the Islamist group allied with the Taliban and al-Qaeda, and the uh, head of the, uh, the group that's designed to negotiate with the Taliban even said that the Haqqani network and al-Qaeda are based in, in Kapisa province. And so, we can be very specific. This is al-Qaeda, this is yeah. the Taliban, it's the Haqqani network, and it's Gulbuddin Hekmatyar. It's all of them. It's everybody's there. They're, this is a fertile ground for all the gangsters. Yeah, and, and, this, and it's, it's quite common. I mean, we see this throughout central, northeastern, eastern, southeastern, southern Afghanistan, where these groups are all operating in concert, sometimes operating at odds with each other, as right. ha happens between, you know, radical groups. The chairman of the Peace Committee in the province accuses Pakistan's Inner Service Intelligence Director of supporting the jihadists. Bill, haven't we been through this act for, uh, for the last 13 years? Yeah, nothing new there, just the same old, same old, and the reality is, is Right. I mean, at the very beginning of the war, the ISI helped to, you know, evacuate a bunch of Taliban and their agents from Kunduz province and, the, you know, the airlift there. So that was, you know, while U.S. forces were invading and we let them do it. Twelve years later, this is a province in Afghanistan where the Taliban and all of its iterations oper uh, operating great success. Another moral obscenity, I'm sure, for the Secretary of State. But the fog of war in Afghanistan isn't so hard to see through as it is in Syria right now. Bill Rajo, the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy's Long War Journal, reporting on the Taliban suicide vests against the Peace Committee province of Afghanistan. I'm John Batchelor.